Hi, this is Microeconomics, Chapter 2, Solving Worksheet 1, Problem 6, Specialization and Trade. Assuming that both Canada and Italy have constant opportunity cost, so this is an important given, constant opportunity cost. It means that the change in the production levels is constant. Complete the missing numbers in the table below. So the change in constant is constant. The change in the production of good X is 50 from A to B. And it's plus 25 for the good Y. To produce 25 more units of Y from level B to level C, we need to give up a constant amount of good X. So we need to give up also 50 units of good X. So 100 minus 50, it's 50. So for point C on the PPF, good X is 50. Okay. From level C, to level D, moving from level C to level D, we're also given up 50 quantity of good X, so we will produce 25 more units of good Y, so 50 plus 25 is 75. This is for Canada. As for Italy. The same rule can be applied. We have constant opportunity cost, so the change between the levels is equal. To produce 60 units of good Y, we need to give up 30 of good X. So if we give up 30 units of good X, we will add 60 units of good Y. So 60 plus 60 is 120. To produce 60 units, we need to give up 30 units of good X. So 30 minus 30 equals 0. So this is the final table. Okay, question 2. For which good does Canada have a comparative advantage? And for which does Italy? So we have a comparative advantage. A country has a comparative advantage in the production of the good that has the less opportunity cost. So we need to first calculate the opportunity cost of production of X for Canada and the opportunity cost of production of X for Italy and compare these opportunity costs. So two. For good X, to produce good X, 1. For Canada, the opportunity cost to produce good X in terms of Y is equal to change in quantity of Y over the change in quantity of X. It's constant across the PPF. This is a given. So we can choose any two combinations and calculate the opportunity cost it's going to be negative and we'll take it as an absolute value so change in good y 25 minus 0 over change in good x 100 minus 150 so this is 50 over minus sorry 25 over minus 50 which is minus 0 0.5 we'll consider this opportunity cost an absolute value so, for Canada, the opportunity cost to produce one, good, one unit of good X is to give up half a unit of good Y. So, in terms of Y. All right. Now for Italy. The exact same rule. So 
so 60 and 0, 60 and 90, 60 minus 0 over 60 minus 90, so this is 60 over minus 30, which is minus 2. So the opportunity cost for Italy to produce one good X is to give up two Ys. Okay, so the opportunity cost for Canada to produce X is half Y. For Italy, it's two Y. So it's cheaper for Canada to produce the good X. So Canada... has a comparative advantage in the production of X, since it has the less opportunity cost. Canada has a comparative advantage in the production of X, then Italy has a comparative advantage in the production of Y. Let's make sure it's correct. So for good Y, for Canada, the opportunity cost to produce Y in terms of X is 1 over Opportunity cost to produce x over y, so it's 1 over 0 0.5, which is 2 x's. So the opportunity cost to produce y in terms of x is 2 x for Canada. As for Italy, the opportunity cost to produce y in terms of x is 1 over opportunity cost to produce x in terms of y, so it's 1 over 2 which means it's 0.5x. So the opportunity cost to produce y in terms of x is 0.5x. This is for Italy. You can see that the opportunity cost for, to produce y for Italy is less than the opportunity cost to produce y for Canada. This means Italy... has a comparative advantage in the production of Y. Question C. Assume that Canada and Italy decided to trade 50X for 50Y. Prove that both countries would be better off in the specialization trade case than in no specialization, no trade case. Okay. Canada has a comparative advantage in the production of X. This means Canada produces only X. So the production of X for Canada is with the quantity produced of Y equals zero. So for Canada, production of Y is zero, production of X is 150. As for Italy, As for Italy, it has a comparative advantage in the production of Y. This means it produces only Y. So the production of X equals 0. Along with X equals 0 for Italy, Y equals 180. So, if both countries specialize, Canada produces 150x with 
zero y. Italy produces zero x with one hundred eighty y. The given says they will trade fifty x for fifty y. Trade. Canada gives the good she has. Canada has good X, so she gives 50X. If she gives 50X, she receives 50Y, so plus 50Y. As for Italy, Italy gives the good she has, so gives Y. So minus 50y and receives good x so plus 50x you see the trade combinations are opposites for Italy and Canada so as a result for Canada Canada produces 150x she gives Italy 50x so she has 100x left Canada produces 0y, she traded or received 50y from Italy, and has as a result 50y. As for Italy, they produce 0x, receive 50x, so they have as a result 50x. They produce 180y, give to Canada 50y, and have 130 y is left are both better off we need to compare the consumption resulted after trade with the PPF is it above the PPF or no let's see for Canada Canada produced at a maximum without trade 100 X with 25x this is the maximum for Canada now with trade along with 100 X's Canada can consume 50y 50y is greater than 25y so Canada is better off as for Italy Italy now consumes after trade 50x with 130y. Well, in fact, Canada had before a trade or without trade a maximum production and consumption of 30x with 120y. 50x is greater than 30x and 130y is also greater than 120y. So, Italy improved in both goods. So, of course, Italy is better off. Are both better off? Yes, of course. Yes, both are better off. This is it. Thank you for watching.